Hello and welcome to Toneless Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting that we are doing today is called Tree by the Stream. It's a 12 by 12. We did the study last week and uh, uh, on yesterday's video for the uh, 25 Days of uh, Tonalism Volume 2, I'd mentioned that I would be getting in some brand new stuff, but uh, I'd forgotten at that time that uh, we had to um, we had to do this one. So, um, and this is relatively new. I think I finished this back in uh, June, um, just before my uh, museum show. And uh, actually, I had it in a frame, and it was ready to go into the show. But uh, I guess it didn't it didn't make the cut for some reason. Um, I don't know. I didn't. wasn't I actually had about ten paintings extra uh, for that show, and um, well, as it is, I uh, was only supposed to take half the space. I ended up taking up the whole space with fifty uh, fifty paintings. <laughs> uh, but hey, you know, I uh, like to work all the time, and I have a lot of paintings around, and. Uh, I sell a few, but uh, I, I do a lot of paintings, and um, they're not all amazing, you know. In fact, uh, God, I read a great quote yesterday. I'm going to have to paraphrase it because uh, it was actually in a, um, I guess it was a comic book by R. Crumb called Art and Beauty. It was, I, I hesitate to even call it a comic book. I think it was originally published in a comic book format, but I was looking at it on my tablet, and uh, it was called Art and Beauty, and had a a quote by William Merritt Chase, which was, I think, brilliant. Um, again, I'm paraphrasing, so I apologize, but um, basically went like, you know, don't be concerned with your successes or your failures. Just get in there and work every day. And uh, I think that's that's really some of the best advice I could give any painter and uh, uh, attempt to follow myself because you can have success one day, you know, or failure one day, but you know, when you sit down at the easel or stand at the easel, as the case may be, um, it's always a new battle. It's a fresh battle every time. And uh, sometimes things go the way you think they will, and sometimes things don't. But um, either way, you've got to fight the fight. You've got to get in there and uh, duke it out. And um, that's what I attempt to do. And um, you know, it's the fight that's worth uh, worth doing, actually. Uh, and by fight, I mean fight has some negative connotations. Where you know, doing a painting is not much negative about it. Even if it doesn't go well, it was still a fairly pleasurable way to spend your time. I've had a lot of jobs in my day, and I can tell you that it's a lot more pleasurable than at least uh, 70 or 80 percent of those jobs were so um, you know sitting down and trying to figure out how to make something look nice is a pretty good way to spend your time I think anyway um, you know yesterday I went on a big full-scale rant which I, I listened to at night and I think actually it was uh, um, a good rant, so I left it alone. Unfortunately, the artist who I was covering in the 25 Days of Tonalism, he got short shrift. I didn't get into him at all, and uh, I sort of regret that, but I, I had that rant burbling inside of me all week, and uh, it's my channel, you know, so, uh, and I, I guess I, I would say in my defense that most of the uh, audio portion of these videos is really intended to be rambling rants. I'm not uh, here to do much in the way of um, cohesion. If I, well, it is cohesive, I think, but I, you know, it's uh, it initially just started as uh, me feeling that just putting silent videos up was kind of weird, and um, they were a little too long to use music. I would have to repeat the track you know over and over and over so um that didn't work either so i just decided to start talking over the top and that works for me and uh you know it's a nice way uh to to just get my thoughts and opinions out there to you guys if, and um, if you don't really want to hear it you just want to look at the paintings then um 
you know, clearly all you have to do is turn off the volume and watch the painting happen. You can even put on your own music while you're doing that. Anyway, uh, I do think it was a good rant and valuable information to some that might be interested. Anyway, um, how'd it go in the studio last week? That's the question you're really, really curious about. <laughs> you, may, you may not be that curious, but it's interesting to me when I listen to some of my um, my uh, broadcasts from a year ago. I can I can tell just from the descriptions what paintings uh, I might be talking about in some of these videos, and some of those paintings don't exist anymore because they didn't go well. But um, I did, uh, I think it was five five last week. It's either four or five, and um, actually it's a pretty productive week. I wish I could remember if it was four or five. I think it's actually five. And um, this is one of these weeks where I was doing um, larger paintings, and it was successively larger from a um, 12 by 16, or 12, no, 14 by 14. <laughs> I did a 12 by 16 vertical, I did a 14 by 20, and then an 18 by 24 yesterday. That may have been only four. I could have been only four, but it was a productive week because 90% um, of the work that goes into um, the painting is done in the um, initial painting stages. Like As you can see in the video we're doing right now, I'm working on the initial um, painting stages, and that painting is going to succeed or fail largely based on what happens there. Now I can I can slam quite a few more hours into something after that initial color pass um, but it doesn't move the needle as much as um, that that first color pass. I might be doing some corrections usually um, there's time that the, the painting has to take to dry in between stages so I've got time to sit there and look at it and think about things I can adjust. Um, some cases it might be softening, like uh, the one we're looking at now. I'm, I'm going to rub some white over that background batch of trees. I already know it that I'm going to do that, even when I'm painting it now, um, just to throw them in the back. And uh, that's something I play with sometimes. But uh, getting back into uh, last week in the studio, it went pretty well, and it was... Um, successfully larger and larger paintings. Unfortunately I had some issues with videoing uh, my paintings where uh, kind of a nice painting, a 14 by 14, it was a scene that I've actually put up here on YouTube as uh, when I painted it as an 8 by 8 and I decided to paint it quite a bit larger as a 14 by 14 and um, the painting went real well. Unfortunately uh, a giant chunk of the painting is missing. I didn't get it uh, recorded and then that uh, that happened again with a, a bit uh, of paintings here and there. So um, I had a, an epiphany um, last night because I've been trying to solve this problem for a while. Where thinking like maybe I'll set an alarm to go off every 15 minutes. When I tried that, that got really annoying really quick. It's 15, pardon me, uh, 15 minutes is nothing in painting time. Uh, and a half hour is too big a chunk to miss, but it occurred to me that most of my problems are happening when I turn off the camera and forget to turn it on. So sometimes it gets kicked or something. That's uh, unfortunate too, but that happens far less than me just forgetting to hit uh, on. I just sometimes I'll pause it and I'm thinking, well, I'm going to mix a bunch of colors here, or uh, I need some um, something on my palette, and uh, I'll take a break and uh, address that. Like, for example, I mix uh, two different types of white together to uh, get my white that I have my palette. That's titanium white and lead white. And um, yeah, it doesn't happen very often, but I, you know, it's happened that I turn off the camera to do this and then forget to turn it back on. I just jump in and start painting. And, uh, uh, you know, it's not the end of the world because, I, let's face it, it's not about the videos at the end of the day. It's about the p actual painting. So uh, I am not confusing that score, but I am very um, consistent. I like to have this uh, since I started recording, geez, three years ago. I just like to have it recorded. I think it's, you know, it's awesome. And uh, it's awesome because technology allows me to keep a record of the uh, steps that went into a painting, which, you know, believe me, I'm not that attached to that. I, 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 uh, 
I'll talk about that in a sec if I actually have time about technique. That was another interesting quote in that uh, book I was reading. But um, it's just great to have a record of it, and it's great to have something I can share uh, with you guys. So uh, getting into that quote about the technique, um, I don't remember what artist it was, um, but... Uh, he was a good one, and uh, what he was, again, I'm paraphrasing horribly, I'm paraphrasing an artist I can't even name right now, so, but the idea is uh, solid, and I can communicate that, at least in my own words, and it was that um, you, uh, you can either uh, arrive at technique through a great struggle to um, get your uh, aims accomplished in a painting, or you can become a slave to technique and be and therefore uh, become what's known as a stylist. I am of the first school um, where technique is, you know, not really a factor for me. I do have a technique, but it's really just a byproduct of my struggle to represent the scene um, in the in the way that I'm I'm trying to get it across and. Uh, for that reason, I'm not a slave to technique. I don't really even see how I have much of a technique, although I clearly do, you know. It's, it's, I think it's important to just, when you're painting, to just put technique aside and, and get the painting done, you know, any way you can, you know. And if you, that means scratching or using your fingers or whatever, then do that. Anyway, hey, we're getting close to the end of this video. Thanks for joining us today. I will be back next week with a, uh, another of our 25 Days of Tonalism paintings, and uh, we will be getting some real fresh stuff of mine the day after that. So uh, if you like my work, please uh, subscribe and uh, follow my channel here, and go to my website, landscapepainter.co.nz. You can follow the blog from there. There's going to be a nice high-res image on that blog you can check out of this painting. And I'll be back next week. Meanwhile, take good care and stay out of trouble.